Now tell the nearest person not smiling. What's your what's your problem? What's going on? Now tell the person behind you God is going to speak to you today. Tell the person God has something to tell you today. Now tell the person on your right hand side nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Now tell the person on your left the prophet is about to preach. Now I'm telling you look into his eyes and say your life is about to change. God's word is about to change you. Now, because of Corona, you can't touch the person, but shake the person in the air and say, open yourself to transformation. Say, open yourself to metamorphosis. Now shout to the person, your life will never be the same. Now let's sing, nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Hallelujah. It's impossible when you put your trust in God. Sing, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon. Yes. This is the atmosphere of miracles. If you are believing God for something, lift your hands, lift your voice, and declare in faith that nothing is impossible this afternoon. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His word. Say, hearken to the voice of God. Of God to me. Is there anything too hot? Then put your trust in God alone. And now turn to the person on your right and say, for everything. Then the person on your left say, everything. The one behind you say, everything is possible. Oh, we've got. Give the Lord a shout of praise. And let's welcome our prophet. Amen. Hallelujah! Are you excited to see me again? Why not? Why not be excited? Hallelujah! Beautiful. Now, let's pray. Father, thank you for this chance we have to share your word. We know one day it will be over. But for now, we are so grateful that we have this chance. Speak to our hearts and bless us, Lord. Lead us by your mighty Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And today, I believe that as we go through what it means, how you can be transformed into a church you know just you turning into a whole community of churches one person to one thousand churches and the key number one is transformational power oh yeah let's start with transformational power that the first thing under that was do not be conformed to the world is that not so And once you are different from the world, you are going to find out that a big change comes into your life. Just not being like the world will make you, will will bring the change. It will start a change. Do you see? Not being attracted to the same things that the world is attracted to will change you drastically. Because the world is just going in a particular way And many things are quite predictable. But once you start to be different, 
from the world, not being conformed to the world. Great changes come into your life. Amen. Number two, metamorphosis power. And that is, Bible says, when the spirit, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. But we all with an open face, beholding in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even us by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So, one of the main things is to look at good things. You know, people who look at evil, you become evil. And that is why watching certain films is dangerous. And watching things on television and on the internet is dangerous. Because you'll be surprised how much what you watch changes you. You see? So we are changed from glory to glory when we with an open face behold the glory. So you need an open face. And that's what I was explaining the last time that Satan's main goal is to squeeze your face when you are looking at glory and looking at something beautiful so that your face is no more open and you are no longer open to receive. And that is why the main work of the devil, you know, in fact, his name, you know, I wouldn't have known all these if I hadn't uh, been able to check the Greek meanings of words. And then also, listening to Derek Prince made me notice the meaning of the word devil. It's a slanderer. Slanderer. It's someone who uh, slanders you, says bad things about you, gives a bad picture, bad image, saying negative things. And um, Kenneth Hagen, he told a story one time. When he died, you know, the people that were um, giving testimonies at his funeral, at his funeral, nobody preached. It was just testimonies. He said they didn't want anybody to preach. It just People should just say how he blessed them. And several of the people said, that when you come near him, you know, you don't, you don't get a message of faith, although that was all that he was preaching, but you get a message of love. And a number of them also said that they never heard him say anything bad about anybody. And he, he didn't talk about people. And um, I myself heard him um, telling a story one time. He said he went to preach somewhere and I think it was probably a convention of pastors. And when he was preaching, um, after some pastors uh, came to him on the second day, but on the first day, what happened was that a pastor was rebuked or corrected, uh, or it was announced that he had been, you know, disciplined or something. He had done something bad and something bad was happening to him. Now, the next day, um, some pastors who were not there came to see Kenneth Hagin after the preaching. And they asked him, were you there yesterday? We heard so and so was said about this person. And um, he said, yeah, yeah, this was what was said. And they asked him, so what do you think? And he said, oh. I concur, I agree, I think so, and so on. So, he said that that night, 
I agree with what happened yesterday. So he said that night when he went home. Are you listening? Yeah. yeah. This is one of the things that attracted me to Kenneth Hagin was the supernatural. He said he was in his uh, bed when suddenly a voice came in the room. And the voice said, who art thou that judges another man's servant? And uh, then suddenly he said, a light came on in the room like the sunshine. He said it was midnight and there was no light. He said suddenly the whole room came full of light. Like the, it was not a, a electricity light. Like the, like the sun was out. Then a voice came, who art thou? Because of the comment he made. Yeah. Because of the comment he made about the pastor. He said, the voice said, who art thou that judges another man's servant? And then the the voice came the third time. And after the voice came, then the lights went off. And he was in darkness. He said, since that day, he doesn't say anything about anybody Again, I don't have anything to say. That is. And when he died, if you don't mind, you can check on the internet and you can watch his funeral. I'm sure, I'm sure it's on the internet. At least I have it. You know, I've watched it several times because I like to listen to people who are close to him and what they said. So I have nothing to say. But the, the, the devil is not like just not have anything to say or just make a little comment. It's like he has something to say. To smear and to make somebody look bad. Even if it's just a part of a picture. And usually parts of pictures where you can't explain makes people look funny. That they are the specialists in that. So the devil's aim is to make your face squeeze up. And I always pity people who are cut off from the anointing. I pity them. So, make sure that the devil is never able to cut you off from the greatness of the anointing and the greatness of the blessing by making your face close up. Amen. Number three. Word power. Word power will change your life. You know, the word of God has power. When I meet people who listen to messages, I can see the change in their lives. So many people have told me, I was listening to this camp, and my life changed. One young pastor, he told me, he said, look, I've been in the church. My, my, my parents are pastors. I've been in the church from the beginning of my life. He said, but when I was 19 years old, one day I listened to a camp. He said, I, I never knew all these things were there. And he, he, I forget it, exactly which camp. He said, one camp, either something. I don't know which one. He said, my life, I was listening, my life began to change. And a great change came over me. And I myself, I know him, but I've never seen him interested in God or in the church or in the ministry. But a change came. And he he can point to the time that he was listening seriously. You see? Now, you know, when, when I look at my library, I have a library of books. When I look at my books, very old and dusty. One of the people in my library, you see, in my old and dusty books, is Derek Prince. You see, but I, I've, I've read his books, but I, I didn't know, I, I couldn't get deep into it. Because you see, the word can be there, but somehow, it's not connecting yet. Do you see, it's sealed, or, or maybe, I don't know, you are just not at the stage where you appreciate it. That's why we listen to things over and over and over and over. 
And then a time comes where you see that the word that is coming is changing you. You know? At one time, I don't know if it is um, Joshua or somebody was telling me that he was listening to a message said, ah, this is so powerful. You know? It is you. Yeah. <laughs> it was a video. And he was saying that, ah, what is this powerful message? Yeah, I doesn't know if, if the church knows that such a powerful, such a powerful message is there. So anyway, as he was watching, then the video man started to scan, and who should come? He himself was sitting there. You see, yes, at the Kodesh. So it's like the word, the word really changes, but it seems like there is a point at which. The sword is going straight into your heart. You get it? And so, that is why when you see somebody who is not paying attention, you realize that the person is also proud. You see, because the person thinks, I know this. But you know that the person doesn't know. Because if you knew, you would do many things that you are not doing. Yeah. So the word of God is uh, an amazing blessing. Now, Psalm 119 and verse 92 says something. It says, unless the, thy law had been my delight. You see, unless thy law had been my delight. You see, I should then have perished in my affliction. You see, until the law or the word becomes a, a delight. Like you start, you start becoming happy about it. You know, I should have perished. And you see that becoming happy about the word is a stage. Do you see? It's a stage of the word affecting you. Becoming happy. Unless thy word had become a delight. You know. Now, now this when I listen to uh, Derek Prince, I keep mentioning because I keep listening to him. It's, it's become, I become happy, you know, and I, I, I don't want the message to finish. So when it finished, I say, hey, is it already finished? You know, I want it to just play like music, you know, and I'm, I'm being blessed, you see. So you must listen to things and listen to them again and again and again, and God will bless you. And that's what changes you. Now, in verse 97, it says, um, Oh, how I love thy law. Do you see? Oh, what? How I love thy law. I have started to love it. That's when it starts to change you. Yes. I'm not talking about listening, staying here, like loving it. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. All day. You know, when you start to love the word, and then you start to think about it all day. Sometimes there are some things I say, Lord, unless you crack this code for me, I'm not going to leave it. Because there are things I can see the code has not been cracked. I don't understand it. You know. But you can love the law. Love. You can start. You see these are the words that are being used. Delights. And then love. And then it is my meditation. All the day I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Now. If you are watching Netflix or watching some wild movie, do you see? And you are coming up with, hey, or pornography. You know, some of you have particular pornographic channels. You, you know places where there are Japanese people and uh, Filipinos and uh, Chinese. And African types, different things. 
It's like you are into things. Do you see? But it's like it is your meditation. You are, you, are, you are looking forward to going where the internet is working. To be alone. So that you can watch things. But God is saying that love the law. Amen. Now, I, how many want to be changed, transformed into something? Now, notice, we are just about to be transformed the next verse. It says, Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. You see, how do you become wiser? Yes, how do you become wiser? How do you become wiser? How does a person become wise? What what is wisdom? Think about you. When I say you become a thousand churches, how do you become a thousand? How do you become even a church? I mean, you, you you, you need some kind of wisdom to speak. Why should anybody listen to you? Why should anybody follow you? Now, he says that Thou through thy commandment has made me wiser even than my enemies. So your commandments make me a wise person through your commandments. When I start to delight in it and when I start to love it and I start to meditate on it all day, you know, and then your commandments, like commands, do this, do this, do this, do this. You made me wise. Ladies and gentlemen, wisdom doesn't come from just understanding things. Wisdom comes from having commands. Commands which are do this. Do this. Because your mind is not capable of understanding many things. Yes. Very few of us understand how a mobile phone works. Few of us understand how a television works. Few of us understand how a radio works. Few of us understand how electricity works. The Bible says lean not to your own understanding. Your understanding is very limited. In mathematics and in physics there are many calculations. Do you see? Which they will say is equal to K. Do you see? Can you? What is your what is your calculation? X is equal to square root of V squared minus what? Four AC. All over 2A is equal to what? X. Do you see? Do you understand it? Huh? What is it again? Plus or minus square root of B, B squared. Minus 4AB, 4AC, all over 2, all over 2A is equal to X. Do you understand it? You know, I did add maths, I did general maths, and I had 1, 1, 1. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. Now you, you had 8, you had 6, you had D. Even addition is not working for you. Addition and subtraction is not working for you. So, God is saying to you that understanding of issues or things, ah dear, it is not many things you will not understand. But one of the ways you can become a wise man is through commandments. When you are blessed to get a commandment that do this, do this, do this. 
and you will become a wise person by the commandments. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. Thou through thy command, not through understanding, through commandments has made me wiser. Now, verse 99. I'm talking about how you'll be transformed into a wise man. And then verse 99 says, I have more understanding than all my teachers. So now you can even go higher than the current teachers you have. How? How? I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. Wow. Thy testimonies are my meditation. Your testimonies are my meditation all the day long. Hmm? So now, when you listen to testimonies of the word, testimonies of God's children, and various testimonies, you receive wisdom that makes you wiser than even your own teacher. I didn't write the Bible, and I'm not against anyone. I'm I'm teaching you now. So you become wiser than me when you have your meditation upon the word and you have his testimonies. So God is making you wise and he's making you even greater than your teacher. So you are becoming a teacher of the word. People ask me, how do you become a pastor? I mean, uh, by God's grace, we are having churches in many places today. Yeah, many, 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 many. I don't even know where to start from. Do you see? How did I go to Bible school? Was I trained by somebody? Did anybody take me up as whatever? Not at all. If at all, people attacked me. Do you see? But you have more understanding when you study and listen to the testimonies. You have more understanding than even your teachers. Receive the grace to become wilder than all your teachers. Now, it's not yet over. In verse 100, it says, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So now you are moving to ancients. You are becoming like an ancient person. Somebody who knows this one will become this. This one will become this. This one will become this. Yes, because you've been around for some time. An ancient person. Who will tell you, this one will become this. This one will do this. This is going to happen to this. It's an ancient person. Now that you are around, you are able to see live. When, I, when we talk, you know, some of the teachings. When you hear, say, you know, I was there one day when this happened. This brother said this, this one said. And you, you know, it looked far. You see, but as you are around and you see Absalom's manifesting, like an Absalom is a son who can attack his father. Yes. It's only Absalom in the whole Bible who attacked his father. You know? Or you see, those who are dangerous sons. Or you see, those who leave you. And you see the reasons for leaving, which include all the reasons written there. Do you see? Yes. Yes. You, you start to see many things and then in 10 years time, 5 years time, you, you are an ancient. And then you will know when you see somebody talking, you say, look, this one, eh? We had all this before. We've seen this one. We had one just like you. He said all these words as if you learned it from him. As if you had a meeting. So ancients are wise people. Like they know things. You can't even believe it. So every experience makes you more and more ancient. And that being like an ancient person comes even just from the word. That's why a young man who knows the word of God is like ancient. Yes. So... 
Get deeper into the word. Yes. And you, you will get a lot of changes. You become like a teacher. You become like a, a wise person. And you become like an ancient. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, you have the anointing power. Power of the anointing. That will change you. Because it's not by just the word. Or the, the, it's the oil. Now in First Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him. That he poured it on Saul's head. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Now, rarely do you have somebody doing an outdooring and calling his child Saul. I haven't yet been to an outdooring. Where somebody's called Saul, whatever. Do you see? (laughs) Why? Because Saul is the good example of someone who was chosen and appointed and anointed and made such a shame of it. Do you see? He was such a disappointment to God that God changed his mind. About it. He said, God said, I have rejected thee. Yes. I have rejected you. So, you don't, no one says why, but they, they, they just don't use the name Saul. <laughs> huh? Yes. Even Paul, when he was born, he said, no, this name is not working for me. It changed from Saul to Paul. I mean, it, it, it cannot work at all. <laughs> Now, when thou art departed from me today, thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre. The asses that you are looking for are found. Then thou shalt go forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, and they will salute thee. And give thee two loaves of bread. And thou shalt receive of their hands. And after that thou shalt come to the hill of God. Where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou art come. Thither to the city. That thou shalt meet a company of prophets. Coming down from the high place with the psaltery. And a harp and a pipe. And they shall prophesy. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them. And shall be turned into another man. Amen. How many want to be changed? Truly changed. To be truly changed. You need the anointing. Yes. You see the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Changes a person. You know. Because the anointing is invisible, people don't, you can't see. Like if I'm anointed, you can't see that I'm anointed. But it is the spirit of God on a person that works. And that is actually what is working. Now, Moses, the Bible says, when he was come to years, chose to suffer affliction with the children of Israel. And He chose to serve God because the Bible says as seeing the invisible. He was seeing the invisible. You need to see the invisible if you are going to walk with God properly. The invisible is the anointing. There is nothing you will ever see. When I met old Papa Hagen, do you see? When I met Papa Hagen, he was just a gentle old man. You know? When I asked him, in fact, he's one of the most ordinary people you can ever meet. Um, his daughter at his funeral, his daughter said, 
You know all those stories which my dad tells when he's preaching? He said, we, we all heard it in church. When he's at home, he doesn't say all these stories. He said, when he's at home, he just puts on the television and sits in front of the television and puts it on so loud that none of us can do anything else in the world than to watch the television that he's put on. He said, that's all. He said, all the stories that he told, because he was, he's known for stories. He read, when Kenneth Hagin's preaching, he reads a scripture at the beginning. He doesn't read the Bible again. That's how, I think, a Baptist way of preaching. They, I don't know if he's Baptist, but they, they read the verses first. Then after that, he goes, then it's like he talks. And then it's just stories. A lot of stories. You know. So, it's, it's, it's very ordinary. Very ordinary. But there's great power. Hardly any of the so-called movement today, you know, uh, even in Ghana and all over the world, don't attribute uh, the ministry that they are in towards, they don't direct it towards the influence that came from Kenneth Hagin. Very, very, very heavily anointed. But the anointing is invisible. Invisible. I mean, somebody who can have like the experience I was telling you where the lights came on in the room and, and God said, who are thou that judges another man's servant? The thing you are saying. And you don't know about what you are talking. So, brothers and sisters, the anointing makes the work of God work. And it is the power that enables a person to do supernatural things which uh, it also takes eyes to see that this is supernatural. But it will take eyes even though you are sitting here for you to know how can you, I buy land in a town called Tuamasina in Madagascar. Like we are talking about even to buy land here eh, in this Mampong area. It's not a small thing. How much more to buy a land in to Amasina or Antananarivo. Are you with me? Yes. How much more to buy a land in Indola in the copper belt of Zambia? Or how much more to buy land in the Caribbean islands or different islands and get permits to build and to, to build things and to actually be doing it at the same time? Yeah. But it takes eyes to see. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Or many of the things that God has done in your church and in the ministry. Or for me to be sitting here in Ghana and writing books that people are reading in Egypt. In, in, in Arabic. Are you with me? So ladies and gentlemen, it is important that you simply humble yourself before the anointing and respect the anointing. If you don't humble yourself before the anointing, you will not be anointed. You may have the word, but without the spirit. Do you see? It's just different. Once there's no oil, yes, it is there, but fried rice is different from boiled rice. You get what I'm saying? Is it not true? Fried rice is different from boiled rice because there's some oil added to the rice and the whole rice is you can eat it on, on its own you know one time I was in a hotel in uh, Asia somewhere you'll be there soon yeah and um, I wanted to eat something in the night you know in the night so the, all the restaurants were closed so I, I was looking through the menu they have something you can eat in uh, late. So while I was looking through, then I saw fried rice. So I called, I said, there's fried rice, but fried rice with what? They said, no, just fried rice. So I was wondering, is this fried rice going to work? I said, I don't know fried rice on its own. When they brought the fried rice, I understood what they were trying to say, that this fried rice is all that you need. Now, Kelewele and boiled plantain, they are two different things. Because 
There is oil in the Kiliwili and there is no oil in the boiled plantain. That's why nobody sells boiled plantain by the roadside. Nobody sells, nobody sells boiled plantains. Oh, we are boiling plantain here. You can buy some. Two for two cities. Two. No, 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 no. Without oil, it's different. And then, uh, uh, boiled egg and fried eggs. Chibom, is that what you call it? Yes. It's different. Uh, it's a different encounter. It's a different experience. Boiled eggs. In every hotel, they have somebody who is frying eggs. You go there and they fry different ways of frying eggs. This way, that way. Many things. And the egg comes as fantastic. Yeah. With some oil. And a boiled egg with salt. It's not the same experience. You see that your mouth will become dry. You are becoming an anointed person. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What other food is changed by oil? Boiled chicken and fried chicken. KFC. Have you seen that no one sells boiled chicken by the roadside? Turkey boiled turkey. Now, nobody says that it is not so. That's, this is the difference between a lecturer or a teacher in your school and then an anointed teacher. It's this, it's this, it may even have the same substance, but the oil. I said the oil. The anointing. The oil makes a difference. You see, you can eat more and more and more and more and more and more. Fried chicken and fried boiled chicken. Now, yum. Have you seen somebody standing by the roadside boiling? Just yum. Come have boiled yum. Boiled yum. You see? But fried yum. Fried. With oil boiling around it. You soon be called an oily anointed Christian and pastor. Kama shandola makabaranda labala. Receive it. And that is why, that is why he, he poured the oil on his head. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you? So the Lord has anointed you. Fried, if your wife gives you kenke, for those of you from Ghana, kenke and beautiful boiled fish. Do you see? Kenke and beautiful boiled fish. You get what I'm saying? Beautifully boiled fish. Would you like it? Not at all. A boiled fish is different from fried fish. We need some oil in the equation. We need some anointing. Now, when you strike the anointed, you, you, if there's oil on the person, you strike the anointed, you strike the oil. Yes, that's why people who attack anointing you never, you, they never become anointed. If you listen to Bishop Oyedepo, you never hear him saying anything bad about anybody. No, 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 no. You, 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 want, you want it, you can't attack it. Yes. Yes. You want it, you can't attack it. One day I brought some cats to my house. You know, little cats. And, uh, Somebody was, hey, hey. I said, don't do that. I need it. Because what you attack, you cannot, it will not come to you. And I had a reason for bringing that cat to my house. Do you want to know the reason? Because one night I heard in my ceiling, something was walking. I said, no, these people are here. I know what I can use to kill them. (laughs) Unarata. <laughs> Unarata has come to my house. So I decided to get a cat. Now, if you want something to come to you, what you attack doesn't come to you. That's why anyone who wants to be a pastor, 
and attacks the anointing is a fool. You are, you, are, you are a master fool because what you are attacking will never be on you. It will never even come near you. You can only have your intelligence but you cannot have the oil because you are striking at, you are attacking what you need. Yes. And that's why sometimes you are tested before you are anointed. Yes. As to whether you would get angry with the anointed and his anointing. Remember I wrote a book, The Anointed and His Anointing. Yes. Look, I once knew somebody who had a lot of cats in his house. Nobody could go near any of the cats. If you go, they, they move. And there, no one can catch it or hold it. Yes. They are wild. Now, do you know why they are wild? One day I was there and I saw an old man coming with a sack. Yes. <laughs> a sack and a net. Yes. So I said, who is this man? I said, this man comes to catch the cats in this house. Every day he comes to have it because there are so many that they give birth and there are so many in the house. So this man comes, he's the cat catcher of the house. <laughs> so he comes once a year. Yes, every year, once a year. He throws the net and he'll catch them. And the cats are wild. And he put them in a sack and beat them. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I, 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 I somebody's house. I couldn't believe. And you see, none of the cats in that house, you can't say, no, 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 no. Somebody that you kill every year, you kill them. You attack them. How would they come near you? So that is why the Bible says, touch not my anointed. Don't touch anointed things and anointed people. You'll be surprised. Nothing good will ever come out of you. You are doomed for the rest of your life. And you are cursed. Because you have touched the anointing. So everyone should be afraid. Once you see someone who God is using, hands off. Leave the person to to his God. God doesn't have difficulties in killing any of his servants at any time. He can just say, hey, you know, it's enough. Come, come, come home. That's all. God doesn't have no difficulty in doing that. So you must do whatever you can do to become anointed. Now I'll tell you something. If you hang around here long enough, some of the anointing will rub on you. Oh yes. Anointing is like something that, you know, it's like by association. You know, when Peter, James, and John, Peter spoke up to speak, they took note that they had been with Jesus. Elisha was just associated with Elijah for long, long enough. <laughs> you know, when you are with somebody, another fellow human being, there will be enough tests. Oh yes. Anybody who is mind for some time will tell you, if he will tell you the truth, he will tell you there have been enough tests, enough things. Yes. But it's like you need to be able to survive. And if you survive without being provoked to rebel, to become one of the rebels, then you'll be shocked to find the anointing. I wouldn't be surprised if God anoint some unknown people who are not known to us today to carry this mantle that is making us experience this ministry. Some unknown people whom the mantle will fall upon and who will be used by the Holy Spirit to do great things. May you be one of those who carry this mantle and this great grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the anointing is going to change your life. 
receive it in the name of Jesus. And then, key number five is the doer's power. Doers. Implementation power is another thing. You know, one of the things that will change you is if you just implement one thing. Just try to implement one of the things you are told. Just take one and just implement it. Just one thing. Just implement one thing. You've heard a message and a message and a message. Take only just only one thing. Just take one of the things that have been said and just try implementing only one. And you see that suddenly you are, you are changed. Just implement one of the things you are told. Just take one. Pick one and do it. In James 1.22, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Doers. Doing power or implementing power. Deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man who beholds his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. One day I met a lady, I told her, I've changed your name to Dua. Yeah, I changed her name. That's her name now, Dua. Yeah, Dua. A doer of the word. Do. Pick one thing and do. Try it. Look, suppose you're going to stand in front of the mirror. And you see how you look. Why don't you do one of the things you saw? Maybe even change your wig. It makes you look like an old lady. I see so many young girls who look old. It's because of the, the wigs they are wearing. Because the wigs are elderly wigs. Yes. Elderly wigs. Since you saw there was something wrong with your dress, with your this, with that, with this, why don't you take one of the things and do it? Suddenly you will be changed. God speaks to you, tells you, do this, do this, do this, do that. Why not take one thing? Not 17 things, not 20 things, not 40 things. Just one thing. Just one thing. You know, when I read my Bible every day, I must have one thing that I am supposed to do. One thing at least. Just one. I never read my Bible without moving away, without having one, just even one thing. You come to church, you hear message after message, message after message. Is there not any one thing that God is showing you? Do this! You take a book like a good general. You scan through the chapters. And you take a book like the Bible. You scan through and something seems to impress upon you. Why not implement one? Not 21. Take it and implement it. I was having my quiet time. And the Holy Spirit said to me, give thyself wholly to these things. That was all. I did it. I was listening to Derek Prince the other day. He said, if you read Genesis, he said that from Genesis chapter 12 to chapter 22, it's 22 that Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac. And chapter 12 is when he said he should go. He should leave and move on. Leave his family and all that. He said, all the different things God told Abraham, it was progressively more difficult. God never started with the Isaac. Isaac was the last thing. You are afraid. God is going to tell me that I should leave my job. I should do this. I should go into the world. I should. Look. One thing that God will tell you. You'll be surprised. That it, once you start to implement one of the things. 
start to see a change. God doesn't just get up and say, sacrifice Isaac. That's a serious thing. That's very serious. I mean, it's serious. You are sent to go and kill your child. Come on, man. That's, that's big time. It took a journey from chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 to 22 before this idea could even come. An old man to walk three days journey and climb a mountain. Just to kill your child and you have three days to meditate on it. Earlier on, Abraham has circumcised himself. There are so many things he has done. I mean, these are easier implementation, which have taken, it's not easy to circumcise at a certain age without anesthesia. You use a stone to just grind it. Come on now. <laughs> the idea will even cause pain. From today, lift your hand and do that. It's just one thing. If one thing, one thing to implement, one thing. You've had your quiet time and there's no one thing you are getting out from your quiet time to do. One thing that God said you should do. You don't have it, then you don't have anything. You've come to sit here, you don't have anything. At least you can go away from this service and say that God has shown me that I should take one easy enough thing to do. And I should do it. One thing. One thing. And when you do it, you'll be shocked. How dua power, dua power changes everything. Some of you, your marriage, somebody gives you advice, do this, do this, and you say, oh, it's just, I mean, every day women are told this, and uh, this, I said that, and so on. No. You never get a church with more beautiful lady pastors. Oh, lady pastor, lady pastor, lady pastor, lady episcopal mothers, this and that. More promoted and encouraged and beautified and honored. Yes. Bring them up and let's see. When I saw the first laugh, lady pastors, we have been appointed as pastor this year. Beautiful. I saw it, I said, no. The UD their uniform is not working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beautiful. So don't don't misunderstand the word of God. Take one thing and say I'll do this particular one I can do. And I'm doing it from now. Amen. Amen. I hope you are listening or you are not on your phone as I'm preaching. I, I mean, if you're on your phone, it, it will be quite some way. Okay. How many points have I given you? Five. And number six, maybe it should be the last one. You never know. Be a servant. Yeah. You want to change? Be a servant. Now, being a servant. Yeah, we even have a song like that. Being a servant. Make me a servant. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 14. I see you changing. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him how they might destroy him. Typical. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence. And great multitudes followed him. And he healed them all. And he charged them that they should not make him known. That he might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Behold my servant. Behold my what? Behold my what? Servant. Whom I have chosen. My beloved. 
in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break. And smoking flax shall he not quench. Till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Jesus Christ is God and he was a servant. Servanthood is godliness. Being a servant is one of the most godly things you can ever do. Being a servant. Because Jesus Christ was prophesied to be a servant and he was a servant. He said, behold my servant. Look at my servant. In whom I'm well pleased. Apart from being the son of God, He was a servant to his father. He was his father's servant. If you want your life to change, eh, decide to be a servant. Whatever the features of a servant are, adopt the features of a servant rather than the features of a lord or a boss or a master or some important person. But rather adopt the mannerisms of Christ. Let there be nothing when they call you, your head cannot even turn. There are some people when you call them, they, they turn like this. As if they have a, what is it called? Uh, uh, spondylosis, cervical spondylosis. Yes. When you call them, mm, you can't even call them. Behold my servant. Behold my what? My servant. My servant. Look at my servant. Servanthood. You serve. You serve. You serve. I am among you as he that serves. Servanthood is godliness. It's a characteristic of God. Before anything was made, it was made through him. Nothing was made that was made except it was made through him. He was in the beginning. And he's a servant. And, and then you are what? You are what? Accept to be a servant. He said, look at my servant. Behold my servant. Why don't you become like Jesus? To become a pastor of a thousand churches is to become a servant of a thousand churches. To be a servant is to change. And to become like Jesus. A servant doesn't get up and criticize your, 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 your boss. You are not a servant. You are a critic and his enemy. You don't get up and start saying all sorts of things. Mumbling behind, your, behind the person's back. That's not servanthood. You are then just a hypocrite. He shall not strive. He's now describing how he is. He shall not strive nor cry. The servant. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. It is bowed and every eye closed. You want to give your life to Jesus? Maybe somebody invited you to church. You want to be born again. Just lift up your right hand if you want to give your life to God today. I want to just pray with you. We are coming to the end of our service, but I want to pray with you. God bless you. You want to say, Pastor, somebody invited me, but I know in my heart I need Jesus Christ to save me. If you are here like that, wherever you are, lift up your right hand like this. And God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor, help me to know Jesus today. If you are like that, wherever you are, with your hand lifted up, I want you to come, come, come from wherever you are. Come to the front. Come, let me pray with you. God bless you. Stand right here.
Come on. Come from the back. Come from the side. Come, Come to Jesus. to Jesus and let, let's all lift our hands and pray together everyone in front say this prayer say Jesus please forgive me for my sins I'm sorry for all that I have done wrong have mercy on me please write my name in the book of life I give my heart my life to God thank you Jesus for saving me today. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your mighty power that has been released into my life. I love you, Lord. I thank you. Make me a new person through the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to go this way. All of you in front here. You know, if you go this way, our pastor is leading us this way. We're going to give you one of my books and it's going to be a blessing. You may be seated. I want you to take out a special seed. I feel that we should pray with our seed. Seed of change and transformation. I want you to sow a special seed in your life. A seed that is going to lead to the transformation of your life. You know, a seed changes into a tree. Yes. You and I standing here, we are the product of a seed. A seed is, is, is a wonderful thing. So let us take out a, a seed as an offering. And we are going to pray over the seed in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your, also take your tithes, your offerings, everything you have today, and let's pray over this amazing seed today. Thank God for his power. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his glory. We give you thanks, Father. We give you thanks, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take it out, and if you are given, any other way you are given, uh, online, through the mobile money, uh, wherever you are, whichever country. Um, we have so many things that we are supporting. Building, building. Many, many of our buildings are half completed, but they are still being built because we don't have loans. So it is small, small. We are building and your, your gift today is helping. All right? I don't know if they have any. Whatever. This is uh, Maputo, Mozambique. That's your church in Mozambique when you are there in Maputo next time. And this is Nampula. It's, uh, Nampula, is it near Maputo or is it in the north? It's way up in the north. That's a new church that is being constructed first love church Nampula and this is Tete in Mozambique when you go to Johannesburg you see on the when South African Airways used to fly you see all these places they fly there. 
This is Shashai in Mozambique. We were praying for seven cathedrals. All right. This is Shashai. It's being roofed as we are speaking. And then um, this is Bo in Sierra Leone. Beautiful in Bo. And uh, fantastic. And this is Eldoret in Kenya. All right. Not Nairobi. Eldoret. All right. We have a powerful a student from Anakazu who went there and is building Master Seed Eldoret. And what else? Keep rolling. Bukavu. Yeah, our guy in Bukavu. You know, there is a volcano in the eastern part of DRC. So this is our young man who is in Bukavu. All right. And uh, that's him. Is that Ludwig? Okay. Yeah. He has how many people? 50 people. Wow. It's working. And then another one, Mitendi. That's Tintin. Tintin, who used to be here. All right. He also has 50 souls already in Kinshasa. Mitendi started. And uh, amazing. Souls are giving their life to Christ. All right. It's a candle in the dark. And this is Francis Town, the second largest city in Botswana. Also being constructed. They are all under construction. Being built practically. That's their offices. First Love Church, Haborone. That's the headquarters. That's First Love Church. They have not been able to go to church for more than one year. They closed down all their churches. So they are, that is the headquarters. Haborone. And um, yeah. And this is what? Tala. Okay. And somewhere in Kenya. Many, many churches are being built. And that is when we are giving up. We are supporting Tala in Kenya as well. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep Kasarani. Kasarani. This, uh, the pastor here in this Kasarani, he used to be the head boy here. He was the, is it SRC? No, at that time we didn't have that. He was the head, head boy. Pastor Hira, school prefect. I think that's what he was called then. That's his church. He's a Kenyan. All right? He's a Kenyan. And this is Mombasa. Well, now, one of the honeymoon destinations is Mombasa. You have to go to Mombasa by all means for your honeymoon. And then on Sunday, you just pass by Mombasa for church. One man, he's called Daniel. He, he went there. And he's become this church. Yeah, through word power, transformation power, doer, doer power, and uh, metamorphosis power. He has turned into a church. And then, yeah, he went from here. I remember when he got married. You know, Daniel. And then he's become Mombasa. Is it not beautiful to become into a church? He's got a large church. If you see inside, you'll be amazed. Full of people. All right, and it's the nicest church in the city of Mombasa. And this is Kenema in Sierra Leone. Diamonds is where they uh, they get diamonds. Kenema, who is there? Is it Faith? Faith is in Kenema, and uh, his wife Samantha. And then the next one is Makeni. First love, Pastor Matthias is here in Makeni. All right, these are all first love, first love churches. It's different from the UD people. They are mature seats. These are children. Hallelujah. And uh, this is First Love Church in Inyambani, Mozambique. It's the biggest thing in the whole of Inyambani. If you look on your map in Mozambique, you see Inyambani. It's beautiful. All right. It's a huge building. And the, the whole city. That's Rodino. He's also a Mozambican. He's not a Ghanaian. He's a Mozambican who was in Bible school here for four years. And he gave himself to transformation and metamorphosis power and word power, anointing power, doer power, faith power, and servant power. Servant power. Fantastic. Are you excited? And this one is what? 
What is this? Anakazu. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Do our power. Amen. Lift your offering up and let's continue to support. Across the world will exist and nothing the gates of hell will not prevail against it thank you for your mighty blood thank you that many more young children are going to serve you gloriously freely and willingly have we received them freely and willingly we give ourselves to your glorious everlasting power we thank you lord in jesus name amen all right ashes receive the offering the ones that are cash but most people should be giving through the internet mobile whatever and when you go and you find out that it has not come make sure you give it again amen, amen. all right and um and then you can get your communion ready Now you can get your communion ready. Beautiful. Fantastic. Amazing. Energy. <laughs> I see some energetic person. Zealously working on your behalf. Marasando Kabaranda. In the name of Jesus. Now, how many have felt that you were a bruised reed before? Like you were bruised, and it's like it looks as it looks as if you're about to bend over. Today, during the communion, all such bruised reeds are going to be healed. In Jesus name. How many have ever felt you were a light which started to produce smoke instead of light? Huh? You started to produce smoke. It's like instead of the light coming, it was smoke that was coming. Today, you are being healed of that smoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you so much for your mighty power Please be seated. The ashes are still um, working out their offering. Mandala makazon reniso parando semilo telebishi karabazada. Tamalo mereke belendarada. Take your bread, stand to your feet. Brothers and sisters.
body, drink his blood, and we'll sing a song of love. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you have blessed us so much to see this time. And as we come before your body, we pray that this Holy Communion be turned into the body of Jesus Christ. And as we receive of the body, whatever is in his body that we lack, let us be healed through the manifestation of the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ. Now, whatever represents a bruised reed, or smoking flax. You have produced smoke instead of light. But now through the blood you are forgiven. You are washed. Your sins are remembered no more. A new life begins. Receive today power for your sins to be remembered no more. For you to be accepted through this blood the blood of Jesus Christ now lift your hands for your blessing whatever represents smoke coming from your life may it be replaced with light whatever represents brokenness troubles may it be healed whatever represents your mistakes and your sins may they be washed and buried through the blood of Jesus I speak the word restoration to your life I speak the word redemption to your life I speak the word forgiveness to your life. I speak the word mercies over your life. Receive. Receive. Receive healing. Receive forgiveness. Receive restoration. Now, may you be restored to your original place. Whatever you have lost, maybe you were up but you're falling down. May the Lord take you and bring you back to your place. In the name of he who died on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, whatever devastation has taken place in your life to displace you, to devastate your life, the power of God restores you receive restoration power now in Jesus name now I declare your feet shall go to the right places your car shall drive to the right places you shall find favor wherever you go good people shall meet you shall salute you shall encourage you may the Lord send energetic men and energetic women and powerful angels to intervene in every crisis and every situation of your life. May you never be a source of concern to your parents any longer or a source of bad news to your family but may you be a source of good news and good tidings through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Make his face shine on you. 
The Lord be gracious to you. And the Lord give you peace where there is no peace. The Lord give you the upper hand in every crisis. The Lord make you victorious over all your enemies. Let them be scattered that seek your life. Every arm robber that looks in your direction goes blind. In the name of Jesus Christ, every dark shadow that is following you, I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. And I say, light shall be over your life and not darkness. In the name of Jesus. Now I prophesy that in your youth, you shall be considered as a wise man. In your youth, you shall be as wise as the ancients. And in your youth, you shall be wiser than your teachers. May these blessings rest upon you today and rest upon you all your life. May you never be counted as a rebel. May you never be an Absalom. May you never be an insulter or a dishonorer of fathers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Place your hand on your belly. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit flow in your life. Says, out of my belly shall flow rivers. May your belly be filled with rivers of living water. Rivers of anointing. Rivers of grace. Rivers of the beauty of God. All the days of your life. From a young child upwards, you shall be the servant of the Lord. Receive power and grace servant power to be a servant of God and the godliness that is associated with being a servant. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bless all those who God gave me as my children. Be blessed with favor and grace and oil. Be greatly increased and greatly covered by angelic feathers. Delivered from arrows and spears and darts of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth be blessed be healed, recover and be restored in Jesus name Amen